For this question 2a, we're supposed to sketch the graph of this fx, which is a lawn curve. So this is a very simple lawn curve that you should have learned it since you're in O-level. For this domain of x between 2 to infinity. So with a GC, you have no excuse of not being able to do this. Right? So let us uh, quickly have a quick sketch of what this looks like okay x will be equal x equal to 1 is your vertical asymptote when when x equals to 2 all right you know that um, long 1 is 0 and therefore it is this point here and it will tend to infinity this way okay so when you're using a GC please take note uh, because uh, your GC uh, tend to show you you know some kind of a weird shape because the GC can't show you uh, the asymptote okay so exactly how you look like Okay, using a graphing software, you can uh, actually see it this way, right? With the domain of 2 to infinity, right? So the range of our f should be rather obvious, isn't it? Okay, it will be from negative infinity to 0, inclusive. Okay, so this will be answer the first part of question. Sketch and state its range. Alright, show that the curve is 1 to 1. Well, it is rather obvious to show that um, this fx is 1 to 1, isn't it, from the graph. So, another way, if you want to show uh, that the uh, function is 1 to 1, okay, you can actually do the differentiation. Okay, because for any curve, um, as long as it has got no turning point, alright, it will be 1 to 1. So, in this case, um, if we were to differentiate this is what we get okay and we try to make it equal to zero it is not applicable because you simply can't solve this so for any curve that has got no turning point it is one to one all right so fx is one to one you can show it using the graph or you can show it using your differentiation now we're supposed to find inverse function all right so finding inverse function should be something rather easy for you so uh, again we'll just quickly run through this so let y be equal to x uh, ln x minus one so bring the negative over and inverse ln that means um, anti-log okay we will have e to the power of negative y is equal to x minus 1 okay and to make x a subject we have e to the power of negative y plus 1 okay and therefore our f inverse x will be equal to e to the power of negative x plus 1 Alright, and the domain of our f inverse will be actually the range of f. And since we know the range of f from here, therefore the domain of our f inverse will be from negative infinity to zero inclusive. Okay, then of course, this will be the answer that we need. Now for question 2b, we're supposed to show that the composite function gh exists. Okay, and of course, uh, since it exists, we have to find it. And lastly, we have to find the range. So, based on everything that we have learned before, the first thing that we have to check for GH to exist, okay, the condition would be the range of H must be a subset or equal to the domain of G. So, the first thing that we want to do is to go figure out what is the range of H, okay, and how do we do that? Well, the best way to find the range of H is to go sketch out the H, and in this case, this H curve is a very simple exponential curve. Okay, so it's actually not that difficult to sketch this. So you will start from 1, okay, because when x is 0, when you substitute in x equals 0, you get 1. So exclusive, so we draw a um, hollow dot here, okay, and you do know the shape of the curve will go down like this, okay. The x axis will become the horizontal asymptote. So when you're using your GC again, uh, do take note because uh, some, um, some of you may not be familiar on how to change the domain for your graphs and so on okay so you have to know exactly how to sketch this so this is your hx okay and of course from the graph it is rather obvious that the range of h will be from 0 exclusive 0 to 1 exclusive 1 as well okay and of course the range of g is always given so the range of g is from 0 to infinity so in this case we can conclude that well the range of h is a subset of the domain of G and therefore we know that our GH does exist alright and now that we know our GH exists we have to go and define our GH so getting GH is a very O level uh, exercise so I think shouldn't be a problem for you at all okay so um, GH 
hx means you're going to put in the hx into your gx and that means you will have e to the power of two negative 2x square plus 1 and of course um, after you simplify this you have something a little like this okay and of course the domain all right every time you define a new function or another function you have to define its domain as well so for this case the domain of your gh will be the domain of the h all right and domain of h is well given as well so x is greater than zero so this will be our ghx okay now the second part of this question asks us to find the range of this composite function which is the range of gh well there are basically two ways you can do this all right the first way is um, to use the concept that we have learned okay about composite functions so we do know that well g h is a shortcut isn't it so the function goes a little like this okay it will be h first and then g okay so those of you who remember the story of the eggs okay yep, this is what is going on all right so we do know that the range of h is 0 to 1 okay this is very easy right so um, here we have the domain of h here we have the range of h and as well the domain of g so here we have the range of g and of course the shortcut is our g h okay but what we do know is that well from h we map over to the domain of h we get 0 to 1 so the whole idea is from 0 to 1 when I map over under g what do I get okay and how are we going to figure this out well very simple we just go to our gx graph okay and you do know that gx is a quadratic graph that well looks very easy and very simple for you to sketch this even okay so it looks a little like this so when x is 0 to 1 so when x is 0 this is our gx let's label here okay so when x is 0 you do get 1 okay so it's rather obvious yeah this is 1 and now uh, when x is 1 you will get 2 okay so this point is 2 because 1 square plus 1 and get it 2 so both exclusive and therefore they will be exclusive and therefore the range of your gh will be 1 2 okay and that will be the answer that we need all right the second way of doing this will be of course to use your gc to sketch out this curve okay so when you sketch out this curve and of course apply the domain of x greater than zero all right, you will get the same range as well okay but of course um, you do know that your GC is rather limited sometimes all right in the sense that um, important things like asymptotes or sometimes even the shape may be very deceiving okay if you're not careful okay so you have to spend time doing the window setting and so on and so forth so sometimes it is rather it will be easier if you use this uh, concept of your composite function to help you all right